Yo, yo, what's going on? We back at it, another episode of the Man to Man Pod. My man Swan Bate got my co-host D Butt. Yes, sir. Man, today, man, we got a, a wonderful, wonderful guest. Uh, my guy, a 757 legend, Hampton High legend, V Tech legend, uh Tyrod Taylor, man. What's good, bro? What's happening? What's happening? That's crazy, a legend. I, I, I view y'all as legends. <laughs> seven five, <laughs> seven five. I mean, it is what it is. You know, when you talk about, you know, I, the way the way I think about it. You know what I mean? When you talk about um, a legend, it's somebody who comes in, do what they do, and, and leave a, a stamp mm-hmm. on no, wherever I, they was at. You know what I'm saying? And, and making an impact. And I and I mean, absolutely. Shit. Even really getting really. from Ron C last week was like, man, that's crazy to me. Like, cause I've always put Ron C on such a high. Like, just I've always had him on the pedestal. So, like, to get a text from him, I mean, of course, and him doing his own thing in his lane as well. But like, that was like just like, wow. Like, I grew up, you know, what I'm saying, and everybody in our in our neighborhood grew up looking yeah. up towards Ron C. So that it's was funny. Cool. It's, it's funny you say that. I mean, me and D Buck were just talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, we're we gonna, we gonna dive more into that, but go ahead, D Buck. No, I was just gonna ask you, what was it like? Kind of because everybody don't grow up kind of in those type of environments. Obviously, being from uh South Florida, it's a bunch of cats that I looked up to, uh, family members, even and ain't too many places like that around the country. I know 757 is another place like that, a bunch of legends. I heard legendary stories about uh Ron Curry on the football. Basketball court, obviously AI, Vic, just so many names. What was it like just growing up um, in that environment? And then was it like you felt like you had to live up to that, or what was it like? Um, it was inspiring first, and I think I didn't understand that until um, until I got to like high school. I mean, of course, as a kid, just growing up seeing the AI, the Aaron Brooks, the Connor Curry's, Antoine Bethes, Michael Vick, there's plenty of other people even on the other side of the water I don't name like. Uh, D'Angelo Hall, Alonzo Mourning, uh, I mean, Bruce Smith, of course, way before my time. But just mm-hmm. growing up in that area, um, the one thing that I could say, anytime you had an encounter with any of those people that I named, it always felt like it was family and it always felt like it was love. And I think that went a long way. Just <clears throat> I know it did on my childhood, and I think it did across just the people that I grew up with because they always felt that they can approach those people. And for mm-hmm. me, that kind of kept like the dream like real for me like of course you grew up like wanting to be those kids oh i mean wanting to be those guys and they were still kids at the time i mean we just put them i mean ron c was in high school and you'd have thought that he was yeah. you'd have thought he was in the nfl already like just you know what I'm saying? the people lined up to see him on the friday games but um like i said for me it just kept the dream alive to know that those people that we looked up uh two were from my neighborhood and they were doing successful things and great things even on at the high school um just keeping in touch with those guys and i've always just kept that in the back of my mind like man those kids or those people from my neighborhood if they could do it i could do it and it just kind of kept the motivation and the drive of me um even more focused just to, to to make make my own name and to make my family and my neighborhood proud as well Sure, like before before even high school, right? Let's let's like kind of take it back. Um, you know, for those that out don't, you know, Shell Road, you know what I'm saying? And sure. what 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 Shell Road stands for, what Shell Road means to you, and then just growing up, obviously, you know, um you on the basketball court, you know what I mean? You on the football field, like um the the the, the relationship you had with your mom and your dad, like just talk about your your upbringing, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, my parents, both my parents are from Shell Road, Hampton, Virginia, and uh, I mean, it was a rough, it was, it was a rough spot or a rough neighborhood growing up for them. I mean, it kind of got better as, as as I got older, but um, and it's still not all the way where it needs to be, um, but that was something that we we held on to. That was our neighborhood. I mean, if it was if you didn't do anything, you definitely ran up and down the streets. Uh, whether it was with your cousins, whether we was going to play football, going to the uh, to the park to play basketball, that was just a staple for us in our neighborhood. Um, and to touch on something from you, D, but um, I didn't feel the pressure of living up to those names until I got to high school. And of course, I went to Hampton High School. Um, 
uh, legend coach and Coach Mike Smith. I mean, I don't even know how many wins he's had. But once when I became a freshman, I remember something that he told us. If we left Hampton High School, whether it was in basketball or football, and we didn't put something in the trophy, <laughs> the trophy case, it was, it, was a, it was a waste of time for us. And like to hear that as a freshman, it's like, dang, I'm just trying to come, you know what I mean, play. Yeah. Yeah, you want to win a championship, but it's like, dang, they basically told us if you don't win a championship, you, you was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> dang. So, I mean, we wasn't able to get it done on the basketball side. Um, but on the football side, I mean, we was close for the first two years. I finally got it done my junior year. Um, and that was, I mean, that was something to remember. I mean, they haven't won a state championship in football since since I left. Uh, they've had some a number of good teams, but I mean the competition is so is so tough down there that yeah. to win the state championship is is tough. So to be able to walk away from our school with that accomplishment was definitely big for me, big for my family, just big for the neighborhood um, to keep that tradition going. Uh, young kid from the same area, uh, Sherro area, Hampton, grew up. Um, it wasn't like I was a transfer. Like I genuinely came up in that area, watched. Mm-hmm ones before me and was able to uh, accomplish something that very not not too many people uh, could say they did in that time. I mean, Hampton has a bunch of state championships, but I mean, four of those came from one class. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> that's crazy when you think Ron got three, but his younger cousin uh, Muffin, he has four. So, I mean, Muffin was a freshman in Ron's sophomore year, and they won four straight. So, it's like, dynasty. Yeah. yeah, for real, <laughs> for sure. So, like coming up, like um, obviously, I see you play basketball. Was that what was your first love? Was it basketball? Was it football? Any other sport? Uh, my first love was probably basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, I started playing basketball and football at the age of five. Um, was on the AAU circuit. Uh, I love basketball. I was, I was better at football. But I just love playing basketball. It's just easier to go play with your homies. Not everybody is 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 yeah. into football. It's, it's a certain group of your of your childhood friends that actually like football. But for the most part, everyone uh, play a, a pickup game. Whether you could play or not, people would get on the court and play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was just it was just something that was that was fun to me. Um, but once I started getting bigger um, and getting on the football field, <laughs> funny story. My first year. I wore number 83 and I was a guard. My dad was a coach and I could not put this in my mind. Like, there's no way I'm going out here. Out this, out this stink. Stink. I remember coming home because I'd already played a season of basketball. I remember coming home and telling my mom, like I said, my dad was a coach. I told my mom, I'm like, mom, this this football is it's not going to go long if I got to play this position. Like, I, yeah. I'm not playing right guard. It's, it's not happening. I just crazy. Of course, she was like, "Well, just keep keep trying. Like, get it. You know, what I'm saying it, it, it'll catch on to you." And the next year, my dad put me at quarterback. I was always a kid that could throw. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't the fastest. I was good at making people miss, but I was not the fastest at all. Um, put me out there at quarterback, and we ended up winning, which was back then called the Super Bowl for the Hem Tornadoes. Uh, we won that, and the rest is history. But mm-hmm. Pops knew what he was doing. Yeah, it was yeah. a small window. He had, he, had that year, he had that year window. But he had to humble you first. If he didn't switch that position, I would have been playing basketball. Shit, Pops, like, I can't throw him at quarterback the first year. The parents going to get upset. So, you know what I mean? I'm put him in, put him in this 83 and have him pulling around this 83, corner. 83, though. Oh, man. <laughs> now, nah, Hampton Tornadoes used to be tough. I know when I, um, when I was coming up, um, y'all was in our division. Or yeah. Whatever, and, and, and that – it should always be some competition. Like I think Hampton Tornadoes, the Langley Eagles. Yep, and it's it's split. If you talk to people from my area, some people played in the city league, which was Aberdeen. Uh, yeah, Doris Miller. Shit, they had Oyster Point, Denby. Yeah, so just squad, B. So I was on base, so I was with the Four Uses Eagles. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. We played like a Langley Air Force Base, so they had a mob. Hampton Tornadoes. What Seafoot, Gloucester, yeah, yeah. I remember all those teams, but yeah, <laughs> York yeah. Seafoot a team and uh, Denby, you know Yorktown Patriots, Yorktown Patriots, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> good squad too. 
How how was that different from that uh that AAU circuit? I know the AAU circuit is crazy now. Um obviously it's a lot of money. Uh corruption, you know, comes with money, of course. But I feel like back back in back in uh it was a little more, you know, a little more organic, a little more real back then. How was that AAU circuit for you? I mean, it was that's where you found out how good you actually were. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you could be the best person in your neighborhood, but when you start going on those trips and you running into Number one, or even just in the state, you you think you balling in seven by seven, but you got to play the Richmond Squires, and they got a point guard is I mean, twice your side, just as nice as you. It's like, yeah. all right, strap it up and see, you know, what I'm saying who the better point guard in the state. But um, I think the AAU circuit for me just helped push my competitive drive. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I knew that I was one of the talented, or not, or if not, the most talented on my team. But to be able to go against those other names um, and those other people who were recognized amongst the state and the country was, was definitely big for me. I mean, you win some of those, you win, you, you win some of those battles, you lose some of those battles, but you step away from it knowing, you know what I'm saying, oh, I can get better in this area or, you know what I'm saying, there's something else I got to work on. But those are, those are the times. And I think just being around, like, uh, your friends, being on those trips, your teammates, I think yeah. it's just – Built relationships for a long time. I mean, even to this day, I mean, my close friend, uh, my closest friend, PJ, and like four other of us that played on the same AU team from five and under. Like we wow. still like to this day. So like I think, like I said, those those trips and those uh those memories and those teams definitely just built bonds that lasted forever. Shit, what were some of the, the big names that you know <clears throat> you you came across in the AU circuit? Uh, O.J. Mayo, Greg Oden. Uh, O.J. Mayo's team was a kid named Bill Walker. Uh, he, I don't know if y'all remember him. But yeah, he went to Kansas State. Kansas, right? yeah, yeah. He, went to Kansas, he went to Kansas State. Yeah, I seen him leave from the free throw line in a game before, and <laughs> that was crazy to me. <laughs> we was in uh, UNC. Um, I played against Jordan, the middle son. I forget, I forget their names. All right, Marcus or Michael, one of them. I believe it was Marcus. Mm -hmm. Um, with UCF, yep. But OJ Mayo was probably like the biggest name in that area. OJ Mayo was he was they, he was getting damn near nothing was like LeBron, but he was like that next. Yeah, he was, he I mean, was, we was pulled into uh, UNC Chapel Hill, and OJ Mayo and then was playing on the center court. Greg Golden was playing on the second court, and it's like a humble you right here. This was a humble experience. We just was laughing <laughs> about this other day. Because our team, you know, we was the best team in Virginia. We won this yeah. year. We was going to win uh, the, in, uh, in the Nationals now. So it's like, all right, man, we got some we got some, some, motor, some, uh, some fans behind us. And we walk into this gym, and it's like, all right, bet all these people in here, we're like, they waiting to see us. We get in there. OJ Mayo in the middle of the court, Greg Oden on the side court. They game finished the whole gym clear out. I was like, damn. <laughs> like, we gonna stay and watch us, <laughs> and we basically in front of an empty crowd. I mean, we know winning the game, but it's like, yo, that that right there, you thinking that you walk into the gym and you all oh, this, and it's like, nah, they're not even here to see y'all, bro. <laughs> they don't even care about y'all. <laughs> yeah, the boys, old, they had Odin. Odin was up there too. Obviously, what he went number one, end up going number one pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those some dogs, man. Yeah, it's crazy because when I was in, uh, when I was in Indy, uh, that's when um. Greg and who was it? I think it was they had it. That team was crazy in Indy. It was oh, he was from Indy. I, well, I know, I know the. I, I think that the AAU circuit they kind of combined them. It was yeah. like him, Mike Conley. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Him, was, Mike Conley. Kind of came because I know OJ for a while played with the D1 Greyhounds, and then he ended up switching to another team. Like I seen him on another uh, another team later on, but. Yeah, the AAU market was kind of weird. Some teams definitely switched. I know for our area, Boo Williams pretty had pretty much had that on lock. But certain teams in Maryland, like they would switch their teams uh, each year. It was kind of crazy. But yeah, so uh, kind of come through on that on that on that circuit. Yeah, I remember a bunch of them boys went to O State that year. Mm -hmm. um, what I was about to say. Um, so, like, you, did you play? Uh, you play ball, all, basketball, all through high school? Or was it a certain point in your high school career you was like, all right, let me focus on football? Now, I played basketball all the way through my senior year. I played football every year except my seventh grade year. I was right. like in between 
too big for rec league, but I couldn't play JV, obviously. So mm -hmm. after a year off, me and my dad just trained. Um, and I played basketball. But yeah, I played basketball all the way up until senior. I wanted to play at Virginia Tech. A lot of people didn't know this, but Coach Weaver really wasn't a fan of it. We used to always play our basketball team uh, in our gyms, like in the off season. But yeah, Coach Beamer wasn't a fan of it, so I didn't even like keep pushing the needle on that. B. Rand was one of the guys that played the split time, but uh, yeah, I didn't even push him on that. He said what he said, and I just stayed with football. Yeah. So, so what was that recruiting process like? I know did you have like a lot of offers basketball wise, or did you I had I had offers basketball. Um, a lot of teams because I'd already had a football scholarship asked me if I wanted to play both, and I had made my mind up in college or well, in high school when I left high school that I was just going to play football. Once I got to Virginia Tech, that's when kind of like the the interest of me playing basketball again, just because we was playing it like if we wasn't playing football, we was going to the gym to play basketball. I was like, man, I don't know. I might want to do this, but yeah, that didn't last too long. But yeah, most teams that, that, that talked to me football wise was also, if I wanted to come there to be a dual sport athlete. Yeah, I didn't, that would have been tough though. Hats off to the guys that was able to do that because school itself is already like the yeah, challenge. Demanding. Yeah. So hats off to those guys. Who's, who's your top, um the top schools coming out? Like who are your uh your your top like your top five Virginia my top five Virginia Tech Florida Penn State North Carolina State and UNC Chapel Hill. Did what? they ever get close? Are you going somewhere else? Like you going to visit? Uh, you almost like hey man. Florida was Florida was close early on. Well, I tell you a story. Uh, my Hokies probably don't know this, but. Growing up, I was always a UVA guy. Sounds crazy because they yeah. hate me. They don't, they don't like that. But yeah. a lot of my uh, guys that went to my high school, other than Ronald Curry, who kind of broke the train and went to UNC, my head coach in high school, his son was a kicker at UVA. So a lot of his players ended up going to UVA. We had probably eight yeah. guys at one point that, that went. Hagens, uh, Raymond Mann, um, Man, Muffin. Muffin. It was it was a number of guys that went to UVA. So I went on a, a bunch of unofficial visits just because those guys were already in college and me going to see those guys play. So as far as college games, I've probably been to more UVA. At that point, I had been to more UVA games than Virginia Tech. Once I started playing uh, my, my sophomore year, so my junior year, I started off the season, I started quarterback who was a senior, broke his leg in our first scrimmage. Uh, so I started off the season, hurricane hit, I want to say it was Isabel, that stopped football for like three weeks back in Virginia. By the time everything squared away, he ended up finishing off the season. We lost in the playoffs. He graduated. I played my sophomore year. But my sophomore year, we was going into the season with a highly touted receiver named Todd Nolan. Virginia Tech offered him and – of course, they want to know who's throwing them the ball. So his numbers are going up. His stats are going up. My stats are increasing, you know, as the season goes. So once he was on the radar for them, then I became, like, the guy that they were trying to circle to bring in as well, too. He was a year ahead of me. But, um, yeah, once Virginia Tech came into the picture, I kind of just fell in love with the coaching staff there. Like I said, I could say Florida – was close, Penn State was close, but Virginia Tech, nothing, none of those coaches or none of those cultures um, or programs made it feel like home the way that Coach Beamer did. And that was just from the first time I met them, him coming to Hampton to Hyde and him coming to sit in front of my parents' um, house. It just, from day one, it felt like it was, it was family and uh, nothing but respect for Coach Beamer his staff, Coach Kavanaugh, Coach Newsom, Coach Nonspring, the guys that brought me in, um, we still communicate to this day. And uh, I'll forever thank them for the opportunity they gave me just to be able to go further my education and it's also further my, uh, my athletic career. So what about, all right, so like on the outside looking in, right? And before you, you got to think it was Marcus Vick, mm -hmm. it was Brian Randall, mm -hmm. um, it was Michael Vick, right? So all those quarterbacks is, coming from 
the seven five. Like, did that have any type of influence on you Black making that decision? Too. Black quarterback too, right? Did to, that did that have any influence? To be honest, it it did not. Um, looking back at it, it was a wonderful thing that it played out that way. I had yeah. nothing to expect for those guys, but I always just kind of I never wanted to be persuaded by other people. I mean, it's a Plenty, plenty of stories that came from my neighborhood, whether good or bad. I kind of always wanted to write my own story. Um, yeah. But that opportunity came within Virginia Tech, and I was able to, like I said, continue to write my story there. Um, what they did before me was amazing. Um, the fact that they all came from my area or the 757 area. Um, I mean, B-Rand, we still going to – we're going to break them in. We're going to break them, man. We're going to put our own model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that they all came from my area, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome um, to be able to be a part of that tradition um, and to carry a legacy uh, once I got there that, that, that those guys had started before. So I will say it didn't – It didn't when I was in, in high school, those guys coming before me didn't necessarily persuade me to go there. But mm-hmm. like I said, I'm, I'm glad that – that the opportunity aligned the right way. I, at yeah. that point, I just wanted to go to wherever with the opportunity was fair. And uh, like I said, that I wanted to be – I'm big on family, so I wanted it to be something that I could I could feel like I was a part of, even if it didn't necessarily take me to the next level. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. What was that tra- – I know everybody's, everybody's high school to college transition is different. Um, you know, we had we had this conversation with almost everybody we talked to. Some people go far away from home, you obviously know, stay close. So I'm um, still been around family and stuff, but sometimes that's uh, no, not a great thing. Uh, but how was your transition? You know, on the field and off the field, going from high school to now, now you're going to VTech. Um, it was smooth. Actually, I spent that week and went to Blacksburg. My dad dropped me off in Blacksburg and I don't even know if this is legal to be honest. Factual limitations probably up. I don't, hey. I, I don't know. <laughs> but hey. uh, I went up there and I spent the week and I actually, I mean, I didn't get any money or anything, but I stayed with Eddie Royal, who was a who was playing at uh at Virginia Tech at the time, stayed with him for the week. Um and they kind of just like treated me like a little brother. I was like go sitting it was kind of like a, an official visit for the week because i was able to sit in on meetings like just kind of felt like i was a part of the program so by the time when i came back off that week off the spring break and this is i'm finishing off my last semester in high school like i'm ready to get to college because i had already kind of got a taste of it. it's like man I, yeah. I can't wait like this is cool but like i want to be i felt like i was already part of one of them so i think that kind of helped just understand what their day-to-day life was um, how the football operations was ran. Of course, it was springtime, but I think that just kind of helped. And then when I once I got to college, I was there uh, summer school every year except my first year. And mm-hmm. I, I think it just, like I said, it was, it was a smooth transition. Um, the school was kind of overwhelming at first just because you don't understand, like, the how classes are going to go. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a little overwhelming at first. But the football aspect of it, it was like, all right, now it's you playing with the other guys. You know what I'm saying? That was balling in the camps that you had been in. It's like yo, it's time to show. You know what I'm saying? Why you here? So yeah. uh, that was fun. That was fun. I was gonna ask, like, was it a culture shock? You know, what I mean, coming from where you was coming from, and then obviously going to like Blacksburg, PWI, whatever the case may be. Like, obviously, you got the football aspect, and you know, that's gonna be what it is. But, um culturally outside of football like how was that i uh, definitely different definitely different um of course being from hampton um you grew up around predominantly african americans and that once you got to virginia tech once i got to virginia tech that wasn't the case i mean african americans that you've seen on campus were either uh within sports or for the most part within sports so yeah <clears throat> it was it was just different um but i think me being connected to football and being around sports kind of helped that transition because you, at the end of the day, you ended up being around the guys that you that, that were in the locker room. Yeah. Um, I can't say that's the same for someone that's just going there strictly on the education yeah. side. It's probably just it's, it's probably different for them, and you got to learn how to maneuver and figure your way through campus and being around different people um, and and just uh, networking with different people. I think it, it's it's definitely. It's definitely a change. Um, they've done a good job 
each year uh, since I've left. And even when I was there of, uh, of, of bringing African-Americans together, whether it's certain um, events they're putting on. I know some, they do something every year for the spring game um, that I try to get back back to. Um, so yeah, they're doing, they're doing the right things and taking the steps to kind of level the playing field and just to bring people together to necessarily wouldn't be together. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely different from, it's not seven by seven by any means. <laughs> and Blacksburg is a, it's a beautiful place. Um, people you probably won't appreciate it unless you're actually there. I mean, people who came there and played there, I've always said, man, the atmosphere is wonderful, but just to, I know, I mean, I always say, man, if you can some time to spend in Blacksburg, do it. That's really not realistic. Hell no. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, but I always say that that's a beautiful campus and I enjoy, I enjoy my time there. Yeah. For sure, for sure. So uh, when you when you get there, who who's the guy there? Who's the quarterback at the, at the point? And what's it, what's like that process becoming, um, you know, the guy, that own, big guy, big man on campus? You're playing obviously the most important position. Yeah, obviously we talked about the quarterbacks that came before you. Um, so what was it like? Now that it, this is this is your team, how did that how did that process become? Well, I my process was a little different. I went in there with the mindset of I was on a red shirt. Mm -hmm. um, Sean Glennon, Corey Holt, and Ike Whitaker um, were on the roster at the time. Sean Glennon was a starter. So to rewind back, Marcus Vick would have played right up until my freshman year. He mm -hmm. got a situation, ended up suspending him. Sean Glennon takes over, plays the year before me, and now he's a starter by the time I get there. So okay, And he was a junior at that time. So, so yeah, he was a junior when I stepped on the campus. So, like I said, I went in there with the mindset of red shirt and, and just competing the following year. Um, first training camp, do my thing. We compete. I'm all fine with just red shirt. Like I said, that's what that was in my mind. I wanted to go in there and show the coaches what I could do, but at the same time, I knew I wanted a year to let my body get right mm -hmm. and, and get necessarily well get acclimated to uh, the collegiate level. So that's the plan. We talked about it with Coach Beamer. He like, all right, we're gonna move forward. But at the same time, I was still getting reps. So something in my mind told me like, oh, Coach Beamer, it sounds like it, he's okay <laughs> with it, but it, it might not be. It might not be the case. And mm -hmm. our coordinator used to always tell me, Coach Brian Steinfeld, he'd always say, hey, just stay ready. And I'm like, yeah, I'm always going to stay ready. Like, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's part of what football players do. I mean, you got to stay ready. It's an injury business. You don't, you know what I'm saying? People yep. can down at any time. I'm saying that, but in my mind, I'm still like, all right, I'm like the third dude on the depth chart. There's two other dudes, you know what I'm saying, in front of me. If something just started to go down, you got two other people. Well, mm -hmm. we play ECU opening week at home. We go down to uh, LSU the second week. And I remember my parents telling me, he was like, yeah, we'll come down there if we knew you was playing. And I was like, yeah, it's all good. I'll see y'all when I get back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they take the red shirt off of me in the second quarter of the LSU game. Put your mind, there's two other quarterbacks in front of me. Yeah, that's crazy. And they come to me in the second quarter, like, hey, you in? And I'm like, what, that's a what, what, what was the score? Was y'all down? Was it a good oh, we was down. We was down. That, <laughs> was, that was the same LSU team. I want to say we was down 21-0 when it happened. 14-0, 21-0 when it happened. Oh, so, oh, so y'all about to throw me in this five. In this five, right. right. That's the same LSU team that went on and win it. They had uh, Glenn Doris. I want to say Matt Flynn was the quarterback that year. They had the Fast dude, Trent Holiday. Oh, Trent yeah, Holiday. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. They had the squad that year. Yeah. So. yeah, I think that was the year they didn't let Bama like cross the fifty yard line or something yep. like that. That was, the same year. That, was yep. a welcome, that was my welcome to college. Like I said, I, we in Baton Rouge before the game. We outside the stadium. They uh, messing with the cage. The tiger going crazy. I'm like, okay, <laughs> college arms. Yeah. So, like I said, the red shirt come off. Uh, going to the game. We go right down the field. We score. I'm like, all right, back, back like heading to Fever's game. And me, I'm uh, thinking, this is, thinking this is a high school game. Yeah, like, no. yeah. We get beat 49 to seven. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it started good. Oh, nah, yeah. <laughs> right home with that. We get beat 49 to seven. Man. We come back. Um, coach ended up one. That was at the same time, like a couple teams was doing like the two quarterbacks. I don't think coach could make a decision. 
He knew that I had the athletic ability and the talent to play, but at the same time, he still had Sean, who was a leader on the team. So he kind of wanted to play both of us. We were two yeah, yeah. quarterbacks. So difficult, yeah. We ended up going with that, um, and it worked for us. Like I said, we played played well. Sean, fast forward a little later in the season, we play uh, Florida State at home. This is a night game. Christian Ponder is a freshman for Florida State. Mm -hmm. I'm a freshman for Virginia Tech. I think Drew Weatherford is their starter. Sean Glennon is uh is is the uh, is the other quarterback to me. But all four quarterbacks probably gonna see the field. So check this. It's crazy. Our defense, which was lights out. I mean, we had all type of guys on our defense. I I could name ever. Mm -hmm. We knocked Drew Weatherford out of the game. Christian Ponder comes in, and now it's so Drew Weatherford gets knocked out of the game, then Sean gets knocked out of the game. So now it's freshman to freshman head to head. And yeah. Blackbird, we beat them that it's time. That was, like big, that was like a big, a big win because Coach Beamer had never beat Bobby Bowden at Virginia Tech before. That was the mm. first time he had ever beat them. Okay. They were good. You'd have thought we won the national championship. Man. <laughs> that was like another like welcome to college moment because I you have seen people rush the field. I yeah. just never had been a part of it, and I was like, yeah, experience night game. Um, we end up going on to win the ACC championship that year, uh, lost to Kansas in the, uh, in the Orange Bowl. The following year, I guess I still got a red shirt. So the following mm -hmm. year, I told Coach in the spring I didn't want to do the two quarterbacks. Yeah. Which, I mean, to him it threw him off guard because you had to – I mean, pitch, I played a year, so to come back and tell him that I just wore red shirt this year kind of threw him off. Well, I knew that Sean was – a senior that year. So, you know, so like I said, I didn't want to do the two quarterback system thing again. And he went with it for like two weeks, called me back. And I was like, nah, I think, I think this team is going to need you. Um, we're going to try to stay away from the two quarterback thing, but I can't promise you that. Me being a team player um, and just wanting to go out there and play at the same mm -hmm. time, I'm going to turn down, like, you know what I'm saying, going out there and actually contributing and being with the guys end up going with Coach said, and we was able to have another strong year. Um, won the ACC championship again that year, played Cincinnati um, in the Orange Bowl again, actually. Mm -hmm. And then my junior year, I'm the senior. I mean, I'm the junior, and I start just me for the next two years. So um, going into Virginia Tech, like I said, how I envisioned it necessarily didn't come out the right way, but – when you look back at it, I was still able to go and help for the first two years, uh, help lead the team, but also mm -hmm. win the ACC championship in both of my first two years. The second, the third year, we didn't make the ACC championship. Uh, we won the Chick-fil-A Bowl, but then the senior year to win the ACC So three ACC championships in four years, definitely something to look back and be proud about. So, yeah. Sure. Sure. Hell yeah. So, Sue, like, you know, four years, balling. Um, you know, now, I mean, that next goal is the big boy leagues. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, like, how was that process after, you know, your senior year? And, you know, again, you know, we get guys on the show and we just talk about, you know, what was said about you, what was you hearing, um, what were your expectations? So, like, what was it for you? Yeah, so I heard a bunch. I mean, of course, people knew I was athletic. Some people knew I could throw. Some people, you know what I'm saying, didn't know. The numbers and stuff proved it. Of course, I could throw. I was accurate, um, took care of the football, um, definitely could use my legs, make uh, escape the pocket, do whatever. Um, the trend of the NFL wasn't necessarily at that point. So it was kind of like, yo, where, you know what I'm saying, where does he fit in? I yeah. thought that I would get drafted higher, um, but at the same time, I mean, really just waiting for the opportunity. I've always mm -hmm. been confident in my ability and what I can do. The opportunity, um, sometimes you create it and sometimes you have to wait for it. So at this mm -hmm. point, it was like, man, I just, I did everything that I could do up until this point. Right. I needed the opportunity to further um, my playing career and to further show people what I could do. And that opportunity came in the seventh round, getting a call. Um, I mean, Twan, Noah Disa, <laughs> we remember, I remember leaving the hotel, like, man, I, this, 
I just need some fresh air. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna go down to the car. We're gonna hop in the car, go to AHA. Yeah. As we get in the car, Ozzy Newsom call. And <laughs> I'm so stuck in my mind that like, yo, I can't believe, like, you know what I'm saying? It was this many quarterbacks called before me. Right. Like I'm still like kind of got an attitude on the phone. And it decent like it tapping me, like, yo, like, you know what I mean? You getting drafted. I'm like, yeah. I call the phone like, yeah, I know, but it's still two <laughs> <laughs> But but that's real though. That, that's yeah. real. <laughs> but yeah, like like I said, it was it was just it was a blessing, but at the same time, like I, I knew that I would never forget that feeling. Um, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like motivated me throughout my whole career. I mean, people, you're never gonna please people, you never you're never gonna be the right person for everybody, but at the same time. I was always confident in my ability and, and knew what I could do. And if given the opportunity, um, knew that I could take an organization and, and go out and, and help them win games. And that's when I've been able to do um, in my career. Uh, I know we fast forward from rookie year to 11 years in, but. Now nah, we gonna tap into that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, but nah, like I, said, I just always wanted the opportunity and that opportunity to the seventh round. And uh, forever thankful for Ozzy calling me. I'm uh, forever thankful for the Baltimore organization and my town with them still remain friends, close friends with everybody um, in that organization. Yeah, man, we, we've had a couple people in from the Ravens organization. They speak, they always speak so highly. But obviously you, you had Isaac call you, who I consider the greatest, uh, one of the greatest, I say the greatest GM of all time, um, oh called you. But you get there and I feel like from the outside looking in at least, uh, Beamer Ball and Harbaugh, I feel like those guys are how they run the team and the organization will be some, some similar in some ways. Very, very, similar. very similar. And Coach Harbaugh has uh, uh, he has a special team background yeah. time in Philly. Um, but yes, it was very similar. I mean, I, I, I didn't know if that was just me being close to home, if that's what it felt like, or if it was actually the, the organization and how the team was ran. But yes, there was definitely a lot of similarities from my time in Virginia Tech to my time in Baltimore. Just like you said, how the team was built, um, what the acts of each player. Of mm-hmm. course, it's more the professional side, but yeah, definitely definitely a lot of similarities um, yeah. in those two teams for sure. Yeah. Let me rewind back though, because I, I remember hearing, uh, <laughs> it's funny, I told people what the charge is this. The whole time I went through the recruiting process or the draft process, there was only one team that actually, because a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, such and such wants you to play another position. It was only one team that actually asked me to play another position, and that was the Chargers. Um, oh, wow. And they told me that they would, tell, they would take me in the second round to play wide receiver. I was firm on my position. Of course, I've never played another position other than the I was going to ask you that. Like, you, have you ever played any other position? Other than the first year of football. I played right, 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 guard, right guard and quarterback. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never played another position other than, I mean, offensive position. I mean, uh-huh. in high school, typically your quarterback is your safety. safety so I yeah. played safety and corner because one of our corners broke his leg in high school. So I took over uh, the corner position. But, yeah, on the offensive side, I've never played another position. I am confident if I – and this not to take anything away from receivers. If I was to put time in and learn that position, I'm confident that I could go out there and do it. But – to hear that in the draft process is like, nah, y'all are re- take me in the second, you know what I'm saying, the second round, and y'all have never even seen me play. play position, bro. Right. So it's like that, that was crazy to me. Yeah, but yeah, I, still I, dealing I with that. When I was with the Chargers, like I said, I mean, I ended up signing with them eight years into my career. But it's like, yeah, all the teams, you know what I mean, that, that I or that I uh, interviewed and talked with, they were one team that actually mentioned it. And in the draft in the draft process, the only team that I didn't talk to was Baltimore, and that's the draft. Team. Wow, the only team. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> so shoot, man, you go in the locker room, man. You got Hall of Famers all around that locker room. For you sure, know, you got Ed Reed, Ray Lewis. Um, you know, you got great leaders. You got Anquan Bolden. You know, Torrey Smith, great men. You know what I mean? So, and then you know Joe Flacco. You know. People can say what they want to say, but you know he was sure. at that time. Joe was Joe was doing his thing. Like, how did that help you as Yonder. a young rook? Yonder, yeah, yeah. How did that help you as a young rook? Just seeing how the day to day process of being a pro was. 
it was a blessing to be honest, man. And I and I I think that locker room, um, and I attribute a lot of my leadership skills just from learning from those guys. Um, like you said, to be able to walk into a locker room with so much leadership, uh, so much um, veteran leadership, young leadership. Like you said, even mentioned Tory. Me and Tory drafted the same year, but he was. He's a wise, you know what I'm saying? He's a wise man. He's he's yeah. older than with he acts well, older. Both of y'all got them old souls. Oh, right? so, yeah, for real. Just just being being around those guys, learning their day-to-day routines, um, becoming friends with those guys, still people that I can call to this day. Um, I learned a lot from those guys in the four years. Um, me and Flacco were kind of the same when it comes to lead by example. Not standoffish, but just quiet individuals for the most mm-hmm. part. So the office or well, the quarterback room for three of the four years that two of the no for yeah two of the four years that I was there, it was just me and Flacco. We didn't even have a third quarterback. So my first year was just me and Flack. And I mean Flack, my guy. But like I said, he's just like me. So I'm not about to say nothing. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm just observing, and he is quiet. So it'd be times where it's just. I'll put silence in the QE room. It ain't no beef or nothing. It's just yeah. the same person. Mm-hmm. Um, but still just to be able to learn from him, like I said, like you said, people say what they want to say about Flack. He still was able to lead uh, a team to the Super Bowl. He played lights out that year. Yeah, that, that, that playoff run was yeah. – played lights out. One of the best um, – outside of Joe Montana, one of the, one of the best playoff runs um, in the history. Mm-hmm. So – to be able to sit back and observe him, um, how he approached the game, uh, how he also took care of his family, um, as well as other gentlemen in the locker room, how they was able to balance the game and their family. It just was, it was so much to learn from. And like I said, I'm, I was blessed to be drafted into that situation because I've also been on the other side of it. Fast forward a couple of years to me being in Cleveland's locker room and I was 27 at the time, 27 or 28, and I was the yeah. oldest dude in the locker room. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's it's, it's different size, you, and you draft a guy into that situation, and it's like, yo, you if it's not me being, you know, what I'm saying like an, an example for guys, then they won't get it because everybody else that they get around is, you know, what I'm saying their age. So, I <clears throat> I definitely thank uh, guys like Ray, um, Anquan, Ed. Even subs, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shoot, Flacco, Tori, it's so many guys. I mean, Vontae Leach, there's a bunch of guys that I just think, um, and that, like I said, I'm still close with to this day, but I definitely thank them. Whether they know they were doing that or not, they probably were just being themselves. I definitely yeah. a lot from those guys. Yeah. yeah, we had we had Chuck come over. Chuck was my head coach in Indy, and he would always talk about the guys in Baltimore and how, hey man, you know y'all got you know thirty towels in the, in the shower every. He wouldn't let this. He would have this and this, and so he would just have all these different stories that you know fans and media and people don't really see, mm-hmm. but you know it's little things. But when you see that type of leadership and guys holding each other accountable, that sure. what really uh you know creates that culture and that has an impression on young players. For sure, for sure. If it was one team that I was a part of, that those, of course, those first two years because those were the two years that Ray and Ed and Ed were around. For mm-hmm. sure, I mean, the leadership carried on after that, but pieces and stuff changed. But those first two years, for sure, um, was staple in my learning in the league. But also just show like how a, a player-driven team goes. Yeah. Said the the players. We did everything. I remember being funny story. I remember we was, I think it was my second year. It was like towards the end of training camp. Put your mind, week one is coming up. Like, but the coach is still evaluating the young talent. Yeah. And you know, vets and stuff. We they fed up. Like we I need to get out of these pads. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to get ready for week one. And I remember <laughs> the whole locker room dressed in Ed. It was Ed Ray, Flacco, Anquan. It might have been Lil Ray, Ray Rice. And uh <laughs> they like, hold on, y'all, y'all just chilling here real quick. And you know, as a young dude, I'm like, I'm about to go outside and warm up. Oh, yeah, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, some dudes start, you know, saying exiting the locker room. He like, yo, I told y'all chill out. Like, y'all being here, we about to go upstairs and get this situated. We're not going out there and pass today. 
So in my mind, I'm looking back like, man, let me see how this is going. <laughs> Coach said we had passed. We just said that 10 minutes ago. Oh, oh, oh here's Wilder. <laughs> y'all trippy. Y'all think y'all about to get this pass. Yeah. Five minutes, they come back down, says, like, yeah, we're shifts. And I was like, oh, I guess that's how it goes. Like, you know what I'm saying? If players yeah. want something, then that's how it goes. They form, you know what I'm saying? The, the veteran leadership went upstairs, talked to coach, and that's how it went. Yep. Funny I say that because that situation came about when I was in Cleveland. We were the last week, uh, last week or two of the season. We had already already been eliminated, and we had to a Wednesday practice, and it's a full pass. And you know, we just like, yo, do we even got any more full pass practices? Bro? Right, right. No. Yeah. You don't even get these this late in the season. Mm-hmm. It was just looking at me. I told you I'm the third oldest, and I'm 27, 28 at the time. He looked at me like, what's up? And all I could think about was like, yo, this is exactly what I seen as a youngin. Like, yep. yeah, yeah. I had to go upstairs and went upstairs to talk to Greg Williams and Freddie Kitchens. I mean, it was a typo on the script, so they said. I mean, it could be a typo. <laughs> right, 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 right. Y'all to be right, y'all to be right out there. They challenged it, but it won't. An issue of nobody ever right. seen nothing. <laughs> But they would have never. They would never told y'all to go back in and, and get out those pads if y'all would have went out there. Exactly. Got a whole in, inside run drill schedule. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. But we we'll end up going up there talking to them and came down. There. It was the same thing. But yeah, it just it's funny how things come full circle. You you learn early on, and I mean, if the opportunity presents itself, you get a chance to to be you know for that type of leader later on in your career. Yeah, and then that's big too because it, it depends on who's walking through that door as far as player wise. For sure, for sure. Um, so, like you said, like obviously the guys that you named in Baltimore, like as a coach, shit, you see these five guys walking in, it's like, damn, like, yeah, you know, I gotta either I gotta stand firm or I gotta practice what I preach. And I'm pretty sure a lot of coaches they preach, look, I want this to be y'all team. For so, sure. all right, so when you give this opportunity, you know, coach, you gotta, you gotta. You know, you gotta hold on to yours as well. So and it's the end of training camp. It's not like it's week 18. Like coach could have very well stood on, like, nah, we're going out here and pass. Like it's still yeah. training camp. Yeah. We got yeah. young guys out there that need to get this it's work. Still trying to evaluate. It's like, nah, yeah. he could have stood on that. But like you said, it takes the right person and it takes the right tone going in there. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just being being men first off and talking through something. But it was it was it was good and it was it was dope just to see that leadership come from the locker room. Like I said, Ed reading those guys, you view them in their mind is so much so much older. I can't remember what year they were in in the league at that time. Um, but yeah, it was just dope to see that leadership. Yeah. That's what's up. All right, so you spoke uh, earlier, you know, been in the, uh, in the meet room with like a Flacco and, you know, you've been around a bunch of different type of players, different type of leaders. Everybody had their own way of leading. But Ben, you know, when you became that guy, you became the starting quarterback of a team. Was there anything that you had to do kind of, I guess, outside of yourself to change uh, in that position? Um, Not right away. I think the main thing is that you be yourself, first and foremost. Um, and I, I kind of learned that when I got to Buffalo in 15. Uh, we was in a quarterback battle between me, E.J. Manuel, another hometown guy, and, uh, and Matt Castle. And I remember, like, just going into that situation, like, hey, I mean, at the end of the day, just be yourself. Um, vocalize or be vocal when the opportunity presents it, but don't go in there and be something that you're not because it's easy to read that. I've been around players yeah. where it's not genuine and it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not an organic conversation. And I've always known what my mindset is towards that type of player, regardless of the talent. You mm-hmm. just can't kind of see the fakeness in it. So it's yeah. like – End of the day, be yourself. Naturally, as the quarterback, of course, stuff falls on you. So you're going to be vocal at times and when you need to be. And I think you just pick and choose within your personality to speak up as as you need to. Of course, as I've been in the league over the course of time, I think just me being vocal, um, not necessarily that it was a lack of confidence in being vocal, but just it becoming more of a natural thing. I think it's just become easier. Um, yeah. Of course, just having the veteran uh, or having the experience definitely helps you uh, when it comes to leading. But I, I would say, I mean, from day one, I've still just been myself. I've never been in a situation where I wasn't acting like myself. And I think, like I said, the, your teammates respect that the most is that you're 
true to you, whether the highs are the highs or the lows are the lows, you never mm-hmm. try to switch up. And I think, I know I would respect that from another player. So I think it's, it, it goes the same when guys do me or get a chance to be around me. Yeah, definitely got to be authentic and real. I remember, um, like yeah. you said, regardless of the talent, we had luck. You know, luck came into a locker room with some young guys, but it was definitely some older guys. And uh, he he didn't he didn't really talk much outside of the offense. But as his career, I was with him for six years. So as he kind of evolved, like you said, it just, I guess probably naturally became more part of who he had to be, who he was. And he for sure. And experience, experience just helps yeah. you. Experience helps you with that. Mm-hmm. What was that? What was that experience like in, in uh, Buffalo? You know, when you were the guy, because now that's a whole different. It's a whole different ball game. You know, quarterbacks. Y'all, y'all get too much blame sometimes, too much credit sometimes. Everything you do is under a microscope, and whether we speak on yeah. it uh, or not, as a black quarterback, especially when you first, you know, you first, it wasn't like it was now. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so, how, how what was that experience like? That that change? Uh, it was definitely a challenge. Um, I mean, first being in uh western new york that culture is just different in oh, itself yeah. you say it's, it's you don't see a bunch of african-americans the african-americans that i've seen in the building were for the most part the players mm-hmm. um and that doesn't necessarily change anything like i said just just was different culture wise i mean going up there knowing it was going to be cold it just it was different but as far as being in the locker room and playing at the end of the day football was still football and my job was to do whatever it takes to help win. Um, I know going into that situation, of course, it was a new coach with Rex Ryan. Um, he had tried to trade for me when he was with the Jets. So I was thankful for the opportunity to be back around him um, mm-hmm. and to be playing for him and, and, and leading the guys. Once they named me the starter, um, I was just excited for the opportunity. I waited four years, um, been around some great talent, Watch Flacco lead um, our team to a Super Bowl. Just was ready for the opportunity. I remember yeah. telling my mom, like, even in free agency, I just, I just kept telling her, all I need is one team, like, just one team. Like, yeah. if I get it and I don't do nothing with it, I can live with that. Mm-hmm. But I just want an opportunity, and that opportunity came. Um, it's very rare that you get a three-way, you know, what I'm saying, just a, a open quarterback battle with the new coach. It's just, it's just, it was, it was just a rare situation. Yeah. Um, but it worked out. Uh, was able to win over the locker room. Uh, was able to win over the coaches. Go out there and was able to ultimately change the culture. I mean, at that time, Buffalo wasn't necessarily known um, for winning. I would say. Uh, no, yeah. It, we was able to go in there. And, and, and our, uh, you know, our in our time. Uh, maybe yeah. Before, yeah. Before, yeah. before, before, yeah. um, of course, the great Jim Kelly's Thurman Thomas. Mm-hmm. All those guys, they had done a number of things to get to, you know what I'm saying, the Super Bowl, wasn't able to win those big games. But in our era of growing up, Buffalo wasn't necessarily viewed as as, as a team sure. that put fear in anybody. Yeah. Um, and we was Not that we were putting fear in guys, but we were going out there and winning, winning games. Um, yeah. That's ultimately what they brought me in there for, and that's what, who they brought – whoever was going to be the quarterback was to come in there and win games. So I was – uh. I took that, and I just like I said, each each and every week, just tried to be the best person that I could be. Go out, uh, do whatever it took to win games, and ultimately, we was able to do it over that time. I mean, the first year, we were a game out of the playoffs. Um, I missed two games. That was a little different for me because I had never really missed time uh, due to injury. And I mean, mm-hmm. of course, you get into the NFL, and it's like, should you hear about it? But as a young athlete, it's like, nah, I mean, I'm always good. I never, you know what I'm saying, dealt with injury. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like, that was a mental obstacle to get past. Um, I remember us being in London and me basically trying to come back for that game, get all the way to London, practice on Thursday. And the practice went well, couldn't pass the physical to play, it ended up like not playing me. That was like, I was probably like the lowest of the season for me because it's like mm-hmm. I'm all the way in London. This is the game I'm supposed to come back. I can't come back. Ain't got no family out here. It's like, man, what what is this? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it was like I said, it was a low for me, but bounced back. We ended up going into about a week after that game and got back on track, was able to regroup and was able to continue to keep pressing the rest of the game. I mean, rest of the season. And like I said, we ended up being a game out 
uh, of the playoffs. Next year, kind of similar. We dealt with some uh, adversity towards the end of the year, them firing Rex, uh, the GM, not necessarily seeing eye to eye with me and wanting to see what the uh, what the young talent was. So they basically benched me for the last game. Mm -hmm. I was coming off one of my best games of my career in Buffalo. Uh, they ended up benching me for the last game. Like I said, we were already out of it, but they wanted Politics to see. Politics get involved. Yeah, so it's like I, I've seen a bunch of the highs and lows, even to the next year, uh, us breaking the 17-year streak of uh, not going to the playoffs, us being able to do that under Coach McDermott. But even dealing with them benching me against the Chargers earlier that season, um, like I said, the, the politics of it. I remember mm -hmm. him, and this is actually the first time I said this, but I remember him telling me, like, I, he looked me in the face and said, man, I, I'd be lying to you if I knew this was the right move to make. Mm -hmm. Right. My mind is like, well, dang, well, why are we making the move then? Yeah. But neither here nor there. Like I said, just continue to keep pressing forward. You never necessarily let the circumstances uh, overtake your emotions or just your physical capability. So, but, still but, but but keep it in the buck, right? So even like you said, like <clears throat> neither here nor there, but being human, right? And knowing what you put into this yeah. and, to have, and to have somebody be like, you know, I'll be lying to you. Like, I know that still like did something to you mentally. You know what I'm saying? And just like all in all, like, you know what I mean? So how did you, I mean, I'm gonna ask you, how did you get over it? Obviously you, you got to, but like, what did that do? Did it like touch your confidence? Did it, you know what I mean? What 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 was you at mentally with that? Uh, it was tough to process. The, the toughest part of the process was that I still knew that I had to go and still be a leader for the group. Mm -hmm. Guys are still, I mean, I was a captain on the team. Guys are gonna look to see how I responded. Yeah. And that energy was gonna carry through the rest of the locker room. I mean, you had guys that didn't necessarily agree with the move. I mean, it's offensive lineman, you got shady. It's a lot of guys that's like accent coach, like, you know, what's yeah, what is this? What is this about? And yeah. at the end of the day, he don't owe us no explanation. A lot of stuff happened in this league, and it's like, yo, that's just it happens. Whether it's fair or not, it happens. So like I said, I still, I never, never, I never wavered as a leader, and I was still the same person each and every day mm -hmm. going, that, uh, going into, and that only lasted a week. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was going to last a week at that time. It actually lasted a week and two quarters because he came to me at halftime of that Chargers game and was like, we're going back with you. <laughs> and there's a lot of ways that that could go. I yeah. could be in that moment, or I could just be like, you know what? The team, you know what I'm saying, is what's gonna come first. And I'm gonna go out and play for those guys. And that's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do. We yeah. ended up right there, we got beat, but we went up, we moved the ball right down the field, scored three straight times. But like I said, there's a lot of ways that, that that can be carried, but at the same time, it's like, yo, you know what? That's not me. I'm not even not even gonna look towards that. Right. Yeah. So saying, another thing that helped me in that was that the following week was Thanksgiving. So my parents and them was coming into town. We had to go to Kansas City the next week, which was going to be a big game for us. So I couldn't necessarily dwell on all that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, is it happened? Oh, you know what? I'm going to welcome my family in, see them, vibe with them, reset, and then boom, we're going to go to the playoffs. That's what I told myself. Like, we already, this situation right here, and put us further back than what, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be even harder. But you know what? This is a reset. Yeah. And that's what we was able to do. Sometimes that, that's that's the disconnect, you know, going back to that conversation because the front office and ownership and whoever they may have their own plans and idea of things. And as players, all we know is put all into doing and being what's you know best for the team, you know, playing yeah. our position. And and when other players see like they know what you bring to the table, they know we know we we practice every day against each other. We know who the best options are to go out there and place when we see other things being done. That's what causes fractures in, in locker rooms or organizations. And that's a lot of time what, from the outside looking in, don't get paid enough attention to. And that hats off to you um, and your family, you know, your support system, being able to, you know, not waver, you know, because a lot of people can go left, right, and that can trickle down to the whole team. Like you said, it's, 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 it's bigger than you being that team player. So, man, salute to you and, and, and your family for that. Appreciate it. It was something my mom used to always tell me. I mean, it's – 
it's not, I mean, rocket science and nothing. It's just something that she would always remind me. And that's just focus on what you can control. Like, yeah. Yeah. you can't necessarily worry about other, you know what I'm saying? It's stuff that's out of your control. And another phrase that my our chaplain at Virginia Tech, who's actually a chaplain with the Ravens, he used to always tell us, like, hey, opportunities will come when they come, will you notice it? And if you notice it, will you be prepared? So I never, you know what I'm saying? I could have, not knowing that that opportunity was going to come back in the second half, I could have went the whole week, ignored the game plan, been in my feelings, you know what I'm saying? Then I get out there, they come to me, and I look like a fool. Mm-hmm. And I was like, just just prepare for the opportunity. Like, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what you're going through, realize that opportunities will come back around. Just be prepared for it when it comes. That's a, that's a fact. Uh, yeah, that's no that's question. Go, so you 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 learned that early on uh, in your college career. Get yeah, I learned that early on. I learned that early on. <laughs> so that's a fact, man. But uh, so uh, after Buffalo was uh, Cleveland, right? Yep, Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland with Hugh. Obviously, Hugh named you the starter. Um, that was the hard knocks year too, right? When they drafted. Yeah, yeah. I've always been against hard knocks. Uh, <laughs> then personally, I just never thought that it was. I don't know. I just. I felt like they were just too invasive. After yeah. being with them twice, I was with them with the Chargers and Cleveland. It's not bad. I get it. It's entertainment. And at the end of the day, we play in the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. You just never see that side of any other profession. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you you don't see that side. So it just was – you just feel bad for certain, for, for some people. Um, mm-hmm. For some people, you understand that that's this training camp or that opportunity. You're not going to get another one past that. Um, but it was all in all, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I probably should have been a little more open going into it. I enjoy working with them. Um, yeah. But you also see a lot of people act different when the camera comes. <laughs> oh, no question. <laughs> <laughs> you see a lot of I can imagine. Like, that's coaches, players, everybody. It's like, hold on, man. This this day time shit. It's my time. <laughs> it's like, yo, you talking a little extra today. You must be the mic on you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I know that shit. But it, I mean, as a uh even when I was a player, I used to love watching it. I used to love watching it. Like you said, partly because it was invasive, because mm-hmm. you know, being in your organization, I want to see how how they do things over there. I want to see how they meet, how they practice. So um, I definitely understand the uh the entertainment value from I just it. don't know if it's a good gauge. I don't know if it's a good gauge. I've been in two situations. Yeah, well, you would know better now. Well, yeah. yeah. And not to get into detail because this eventually is gonna play. Yeah, yeah. I just don't know if it's if 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 you watching it from an outside in, if it's, it's editing and I've seen two different ways, and it's like yeah. Mm, <laughs> I don't know if it's practice, you know what I'm saying? What it went like this if the cameras was the cameras won't you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's you also got to take that, but as a player, you may understand that, but outside in, they don't understand that. For sure. Mm-hmm. So, For sure. That's at the end of the day, it's entertainment, though, man. Entertainment. Hey, hey. it's definitely entertaining. That's, hey. that's the deal, so I get it. I get it. I'm not mad at it. I get it. Nah, yeah. For sure, though. That, that, yeah, that make you think about it a little differently. But uh, but that year, though, you know, obviously, you know, some things you can control as well. They went mm-hmm. drafted um, Baker number one, and we know as players, you know, when you draft the guy number one, Ultimately, that's that's the guy we want to go with in the future. For sure, the coach came out had you, hey, this is my starter, and you came out there started the season. How how did you how did you feel? Because I know I've been you know we you play long enough, you're gonna see your replacement drafted. Yeah. Um. So I know I've been a part of that. But how did you feel about that as a I guess as a quarterback? Because as a corner, they always trying to get younger, faster. Y'all played well into y'all thirties. So how 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 was that? Um, yeah, my mindset was, I mean, as long as I could stay healthy, um, I knew that I could go out there and lead the team and mm-hmm. ultimately help them win. I mean, at the end of the day, it was just about staying healthy. Yeah. Unfortunately, ended up getting a concussion in the third game. Um, so it didn't go the way we wanted. We tied with Pittsburgh. That was like a weird feeling to open up week one with a tie. It's like, man. You going into week two, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I feel like I won. Or I <laughs> no, right. <laughs> it's just weird. And then we should have beat the Saints down with Mr. Field goal in the Saints and then come back home yeah. to play uh, the Jets Thursday night, end up getting a concussion in the second quarter. So ultimately, staying healthy wasn't it, – it didn't plan out the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Um, of course, you know that Baker is there, and at some point, whether it's through poor performance or injury – they're going to want to put him in. Like you said, when you draft a guy one overall, yes, you want to play him. 
The one thing I would say that I respect about the whole situation is that uh, the GM, Dorsey, and as well as Hugh from day one, they called me the draft night. Well, actually, mm -hmm. I talked to Hugh the night for the draft, and he told me what what it, what was going to happen, who they was drafting, everything. So it wasn't like I was ever in the blind. It yeah. was an open line of communication. And, I mean, I can only respect that. And in the day it's professional, it's back to me focusing on what I can control. What you can I would be going there, working, leading. And that's why I won the QB job. Like, I never – Never let the outside stuff affect me. Um, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Ultimately, for you to be the best version of yourself, you can't. Because the moment that you allow it to, to sink in or the moment that you allow anything to alter your focus, you're not being the best version of yourself. So, um, like I said, the injury happened. Baker went in to play. At the end of the day, that was their future. I knew that what it was going to be. I was on my last year there. So, mm -hmm. um, all I could do at that point is, is support from a, from afar, basically yeah. as, as a fan, help him, uh, whatever I could do throughout the week, help him get ready for the weeks, but I mean, for the, for the game, but at the same time, staying ready. Um, our relationship, it was never like any bad blood between us, our quarterback room between me, Baker, Drew Stanton, um, everything was, was, was still close knit. Um, we just, at the time we wasn't winning. So it was like, what can we do? You know what I'm saying? That's that's probably the more frustrating part. Yeah. When you go through that situation is that you still look in and like it's like, damn, we're losing. You know what I mean? So it's like, how can how can you help? You know, so how can you help or how can you help change something? That was probably like the most frustrating part. But what happened, it happened. Um they always say never question God. Some stuff happened for a reason. Or well, a lot of yeah. things for a reason. Yeah. Um, and you just got to continue to roll with the punches. Like I said, if you just continue to keep your your focus the same and your faith the same, everything will play out how it's supposed to. No, no, so, no, that's no, really, no. I mean, because we could we could carbon copy that one for the next, you know what I'm saying, for the next team with the Chargers. Of course, it wasn't, didn't happen the next season, but two seasons after Cleveland, yeah. he dealing with similar, the same thing, them drafting a the high pick with Justin um, and me. Losing my job to injury, you know, I'm saying the similar thing, but at the same at the same time, I was about to say you could you could write a book on it on, on this. That's shit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, book, the book. The book is coming. The book is. Hey, coming. hey, got <laughs> you. That's a good <laughs> seller. Be prepared. Yeah. Betting on yourself, like. But like, I, I'm, hey, a, I'm 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 gonna ask you this, right? And you, you, we can edit this shit. So, where you you mess you messed up ribs, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously you can do whatever you got to do to get on the field, right? To play. So the shot was it? Was it explained like, yo, it's a possibility that this can happen? No, it wasn't. But I would love to keep talking, but for legal, <laughs> for legal reasons, I can't keep respect. It. It. I respect can't keep going into this conversation. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> I, hey, I respect it, but I know just as a player. Cause like you said, we're always taught to control what you control. Yeah, and I mean, you you did that even with being hurt. You know, we all and that's that's nothing unique. I know a lot of guys who've gotten that shot in a variety of different places. Uh, you know, in their body, uh, and I done dealt with some things medically with some teams that hey, but how I mean, how frustrating was that, bro? Because like once again, I, Herbert went six. Most people thought Herbert was going to kind of be a project, though, personally. From the outside looking, I don't know how y'all felt in the team, but you draft the guy number one, all right, we're going to try to get him in as soon as possible. Herbert, you ain't really know. You knew he was talented. Yeah. So, like, you won the job, and then this shit. Like, I know that had to be. Was that your most challenging? Like, hey, man, I can't waver again or what? Like, how? what was yeah. the mindset? Right it there? was definitely the most challenging, and I think more so because it's year 10 versus mm -hmm. year six or yeah. year, seven, year seven, year eight. You know each year that you spend in it, you know what I mean? You also realize that, shoot, you're on the back end and not the front end, too. Of course, quarterback position can be a little different because, like you said, sometimes quarterbacks play longer than other positions in certain cases. But, yeah, um, it was definitely – it was very challenging. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. Last year itself was challenging. 2020 itself oh, was yeah. From yeah, all, sure. I mean, not necessarily being able to see your family – uh, of course, my parents are used to coming to games, me being across the country, 
them not being able to come over there, and me having this conversation with them on the phone from the hospital, you know what I'm saying? All of that was, yeah. was really challenging. So yeah, to deal with that, definitely it wasn't ideal. Yeah, to be scary as sure. a parent even here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. For sure. I, and, and me calming my emotions throughout most of it was for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how serious or, you know what I'm saying, this could be or it can't be. But at the same time, it's like, yo, I also got to hold it together because they five hours away on a flight. Like, on yeah. Flight. Yeah. yeah. Faster. So, you know what I mean? They, their energy is going to feed off my energy. So, me just holding it together and also just calming them down, but also not questioning God. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that looking at it because it's like dang like you said you do all the right things to get to this point and then it still gets taken away from you yeah that's that could be a mystery it'll probably forever be a question on my mind but i also think that some stuff that happened to you is just necessary that's um, right it allows you to refocus but it also just allows you to double down on on your foundation and if your foundation ain't right then you'll crumble in those times and fortunately and thankfully through God, my family, my support system, my foundation has been right since day one. And I'm able to be able to overcome anything that's thrown my way. Yep. It sounds cocky saying that, but that ain't, it's more so just confident and knowing confident, that yeah. my God always got my back and my support system always gonna be there. Yeah, and that's a huge, 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 huge blessing, man. Uh, and, and very fortunate because a lot of, you know, a lot of players, I was I was fortunate to have the same same type of support system AB as well. And it's a lot of players that come into because we come into it. You don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Everybody gonna have their own unique uh, experience, you know, as, as professional athletes, especially football players. So to have that, that's priceless, man. So you know, man. You know because we're, we're reminding me. Go ahead, AB. Nah, because I was saying like as athletes, we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. Mm -hmm. But shit. Your support system don't either. So it's right. like, they like, you know, mom and dad is like, well, damn, like, how can I help them? You know what I mean? So all they can do is just stand firm on, you know, what they've been, you know, instilling in you your whole, your entire life. So yeah. it's it's not only hard on the athletes them, themselves or, or, or herself, but their family and support system, system as well. For sure. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, and you hit it on the, you hit it on the head. I was going to say, I mean, you hear you, you everybody probably heard like the Nipsey uh, quote when he's saying basically like I'm not gonna sit here and say that I just you know what I'm saying I knew it all the whole time or if I had all all the things you know what I'm saying aligned the right way he just didn't quit basically you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. yeah. and what I've what I've learned throughout my journey whether it's been in life or in sports is that you never know who your inspiration to like your yeah. story is always inspiring somebody else so. You quitting is also going, you know what I'm saying, affect somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, you looking at it like it's you going through it, but it's somebody always watching. So even you just, you know what I mean? All right, boom, it's a, it's a tough one. You picking your head up and just continue to keep trucking on through, that's inspiration for somebody else. And everybody life mission, now of course, everybody want to be the greatest in everything they ever do. Everybody want to be successful, but some people, mission in in life is to inspire others and you know what i'm saying right. your story is going to mean a lot to other people that's watching so man yeah. i would say anybody to get a chance to watch this if, if anything if you learn from my story just remember man just continue to keep keep pushing like everything ain't gonna be high everything gonna be low but at the end of the day if the opportunity is still in front of you continue to keep pushing forward as you say what you say keep striving keep striving baby yeah. that's a word man that's it, that's it. On the Houston man, next chapter in Houston man. I know you're excited about it. Um, how was your conversation excited. with with uh, Nick? Uh, they they've been good. They've been good. Um, got a chance to go out there Wednesday through Friday last week. Um, it's some familiar familiarity with uh, some of the coaches. Coach Campy was our offensive line coach last year with the Chargers. Uh, Pep Hamilton was our quarterback coach last year with hey. the Chargers, as well as hey. H U. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. Pep. Yeah. Coach Cully was my quarterback coach in Buffalo for a year. So, okay, um, yeah. We know, we know uh, the coaching staff and even some of the players that we picked up, I either played with them or played against them and just known them. So, 
excited for the opportunity. Um, I think every year that you're in it uh, or that you're in, in, in the sport or whatever profession, I think you just can, t- can carry the years prior as learning obstacles and learning uh, situations for you to be a better person for the opportunity at hand. I think everything that's happened in the previous 10 years has prepared me for this moment to walk in there uh, excited for the opportunity, which it had head hell high and just walk mm-hmm. with confidence knowing that you can do whatever it is that, that, that it's going to take to help turn the organization around, whether it's me, um, that quarterback, I mean, you don't, the unknown is still the unknown. Yep. Um, but I will say that I'm going to be prepared to go out there and, uh, and help win games and do whatever it takes. Uh, like I said, the opportunity is there and I'm excited for it. Nah, man, that's it, man. That's all you can do. As my as as coaches, you should always say in the meet rooms to the guys that's wherever on the depth chart, man, prepare like you a starter because you never know. You know what I mean? So, like you said, like always be prepared, control what you can control. For and sure. again, like me and D Butt, I think it was on Monday, we were just talking about relationships, relationship throughout the league. Um, you know, going to see eleventh year, and like you said, like, you know, it's a lot of familiar faces on the staff now. Um, and again, just with the, the the youngsters watching it, like you never know when you're gonna have to cross cross paths with these coaches or whatever the case may be. So the way the way you act, the way you um, the way you carry yourself, just the way you go about your business is always important because you could be a year eleven, and you know teams is looking, and then you might have a coach on the staff like, look, I know how that guy's gonna work. He gonna come to mm-hmm. work every day. He gonna be the the the, the a pros pro. And you know, another day, another year to be able to live your dream, man. So, absolutely, who did that, man? You no, know, besides besides the book, you got in the works, and you got I'm, every time I see him, I bring it up because I know that keep that keep that fire going. Besides that, man, what what else you got going on outside of football, man? You know, uh, I see you in fashion for the these last, last year. Yeah. 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 Sure. I've, I've always been in the fashion. I think it's just something. From our area, I mean, I was just about to say, A B, it's on the same shit. Yeah, I yeah. think it's just, I think it's just, I mean, we, it's just our area. It's just unique in itself, and I think we don't necessarily dress like one particular area of the world or of the country. Um, I mean, look at a guy like Pharrell. Pharrell, you know, what I'm saying, is from Virginia Beach, but he dresses like it's, he has his own swag, and I think yeah. it's just, it's just how 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 we raised, how we grow up. I mean, our swag is just unique to ourselves, but. I've always been in the fashion. I mean, especially once I got my own money. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can start buying different things that you want to buy or trying out different things. Being able to go sit at fashion shows with Twan or whomever it be, you know what I'm saying, in different countries, just to see other cultures and get influenced by, you know what I'm saying, different different uh, fashions by other people. It's, it's, it's dope. Um, yeah. I think uh, another way of networking, but at the same time, it's also just – a way I've always viewed fashion as a way to be able to show your personality. For sure, for sure. That's what I've been able to do um, for people who don't know a lot about me. Some people only know me, you know what I'm saying, for fashion. Like mm-hmm. it's just another way, like I said, to express yourself. I do have a clothing line in the works. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that though. I ain't gonna <laughs> <laughs> can't tell, you know what I'm saying, everybody. But nah, it's 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 a dope process. It's a process itself for sure, but it's a it's yeah. a dope process. Um outside of that, I mean Tyrod Taylor Foundation, I've always done stuff in the community. Um I mm. remember when I first started, I always just wanted to do camps and stuff. And I mean I thought that was like just the cool thing to do because you see other people doing it. So but then you realize it's just more than throwing free camps. Mm-hmm. Um once I started to build out the actual Tyrod Taylor Foundation, um it just trying to find what, what the mission and what I wanted to actually touch on and just education side of it. So we're working on securing a couple of locations back home and, and building out uh, different tutor centers um, and just trying to do as much as I can to help build yeah. up my hometown. I mean, mm-hmm. Tuan, I know it's special to him as well too. He does a bunch of stuff in the community. But uh, for me, like I said, I, I've always told the kids, you don't have to necessarily be an athlete to make it or to, to be successful. There's plenty of avenues. And I think the the more that I can help bring that vision towards home or other people um, who have uh, the platform to bring that vision uh, towards those kids back home, I think the better off we are because it's, I mean, our future lies in, in the youth. 
Um, Facts. We're not teaching them nothing. And I mean, we're, we're only setting ourselves up and setting the country up to go on a downward spiral. So um, you want things to go up. And I think a lot of the things that the guys are doing for sure back home in my in my community, whether it's with Twan, I know Vic has his hands on stuff. Um, it's a ton of guys that's, that's doing stuff. Cam Chancellor's doing stuff across the water. Um, I mean, it's people that's not even in the athletic world that are doing stuff. So I'm just yeah. trying to help and uh, help meet those guys and ultimately just help bring a community up, help raise the community and help uplift them. No doubt. What's up, man? Mm-hmm. man? Salute to you, bro. Salute to you and the sure. foundation definitely putting an impact and um, making a difference, man. So definitely salute to you because you don't have to do it. That's the thing. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. It's big that's time, real. man. Appreciate you, man. Take your time out today, man. No doubt. Thank y'all. Always do. It went a little long, but that, you know, that mean that mean the joint the oh, conversation oh. was good. But uh yeah. appreciate that, man. And good luck going forward with your next chapter. Appreciate it. We definitely gonna be tuned in. For sure. For sure. Appreciate it. Y'all stay blessed and stay safe. It's crazy times out here, man. But yeah, stay safe for sure. Yes, sir. All right, bro. Be good, man. All right. All right, uh, later. Boop, 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 boop. There you have it, man. Another fine episode of the Man to Man Pod. Um, again, Tyrod Taylor, you know, his life, um, his career, his ups, his downs. So y'all definitely, man, y'all stay tuned, man. The T2 Tyrod Taylor Foundation, um, the newest member of the Houston Texans. So again, man, peace and love. My man Swan Bate, my co-host, yes, Darius sir. Butler. Be out of here, man. Appreciate y'all. Peace.